Hello YouTube, this is Michael Kreselovsky with Team K Realty out of Remax in Corvallis. We are videoing a narrated driving tour of Philomath, Oregon today. We are heading west on Highway 34, also known as Philomath Boulevard. We just passed our friends over at Chenard's Nursery. Love those guys, definitely check them out if you're into plants and landscaping when you're in this area. Okay, so as we get started, uh, just like our other video driving tours, please go to the YouTube settings, it's probably a little gear icon, and play this video in 4K so that it's not all pixelated, just like the others. And I'm mentioning the others because, of course, this is a follow-up to the narrated driving tour of Corvallis that we did about a year ago, which was 90 minutes long, and seems like it was a great resource for you. So here we go, Philomath style. So we are starting to enter Philomath right here. You can see the Boulevard apartments off to the right. Those are fairly new apartments that just went in over the past few years. And right around here is where Philomath Boulevard, also known as Highway 34 and Highway 20, starts to get into town. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go all the way west on Philomath Boulevard and then come back east. And then we're gonna, from there, start going through some neighborhoods. So this is kind of like the edge of town, and that is Mary's Peak off in the distance right in front of us. The Philomath Scout Lodge is off to the right, somewhere right around here. Uh, it's a great venue, by the way. I've been to weddings there and craft fairs, all kinds of stuff. And if you're outdoorsy and into farm and ranch, We've got a farm supply store on the left. Philomath is a smaller community. Uh, it's about a tenth the size of Corvallis for scale. This is about a population of 5,000 people. Unlike Corvallis, it does not have a big influx of students seasonally, uh, so it's a more stable population of about 5,000. In some ways, this is kind of like a bedroom community of Philomath, and I know that's, I'm sorry, of Corvallis, and I know that's not the best way to explain it, because it's not, it's its own community. Uh, but there's a lot of folks that very much enjoy living in Philomath and commuting the five minute stretch of road that we've been on to go back and forth into Corvallis. My wife and I actually used to live in Philomath. We lived here for about four and a half years. All right, so here we are. This is the main stretch of town. Um, Philomath <laughs> has got a couple of spots just like this where at a busy moment, we're gonna change lanes because that's the Dairy Queen parking lot, which is a happening spot there. Um, Philomath does not have a downtown that's what I'm gonna call a conventional downtown where you go to a single destination and park and walk around rather the downtown is kind of split it's kind of like a divided highway going through town but there are great places to go here so we've got Mary's Peak True Value Lumber uh, and that associated shopping complex there along with Vinwood Tap House, Smart Coat Distilling, Ixtapa Mexican, Eats and Treats is an awesome barbecue place in Flomath that also happens to be a totally gluten-free restaurant we've got great coffee shops that are right behind us. I think I'm, oh, missed the name. Never mind, it's right in front of us. Timbertown Coffee, props to those guys. They opened during 2020, if I recall correctly. Uh, we've got the Credit Union off to the left. We've got the McDonald's drive through We have La Roquita, which is a great Mexican food place too. I love their Super Grande burritos. And off to the sides, there's neighborhoods and we're gonna go through a bunch of them. We're gonna to try to give you a, a sampling, an example set of neighborhoods today on this drive. Dirt Road Brewing is a great little local brew pub. I love their sour beers and hand pies. And the Dizzy Hen off to the right, phenomenal breakfast spot. We didn't pass by it directly, but Nut Cakes is also off to the right, which is a really fun place to get donuts. You got the Meat and Place Tavern with the Sasquatch on the sign. Right up here, the Philomath Museum, and then the fire station. So one of the things that comes to mind that I'm kind of reminiscing about right now is that I have fond memories of doing wine walks in downtown Corvallis. Ah, uh, downtown Philomath, excuse me. Uh, where, where you do park and you know pay 15 bucks for a glass with a bunch of tickets, and they have local vineyards hosted by a bunch of uh, local, I was gonna say restaurants, businesses. 
businesses like Soft Star Shoes, which hand makes leather shoes for babies and infants and uh, folks that are into like barefoot or semi-barefoot running. Really cool place. Right around here, as we get past 7th Street, and we'll be back here a little bit later, um, this is starting to be the west end of Philomath. We just drove the whole length, basically, of the main part of town. And as we do this, we're going to turn around, and there is the Woodsman, which is a phenomenal Thai food restaurant on the right. Love that place. It used to be like an old kind of logging bar. Uh, there's pictures of old guys cutting down big trees and chainsaws hanging from the ceiling, uh, but they have a phenomenal Thai menu and a full American menu that no one ever seems to order off of because we just love the Thai food there. This, I believe, right up here on the right is actually a Georgia Pacific sawmill. Philomath has a very big timber history, uh, very much timber-based economy, and great forestry programs. Speed limits are low here. Uh, you'll notice that we are slowing down to about 25. And what I tell people is just think of Philomath as a speed trap and then you never get pulled over. Just take it nice and easy going through Philomath. So now we're just heading back the same direction but on Applegate here. And instead of Applegate merging back into Philomath Boulevard where we started, we are going to take it into some neighborhoods. We just passed by, I think it was Compton uh, Wineries tasting room over there. Uh, there are phenomenal vineyards in the Philomath area. There's some great ones to check out. We've got the Philomath City Hall on the right. We've got the Philomath City Library off to the right too, which is a great library, especially for a community this small. And Mary's River State Park off to the right too, which has a great little nine-hole disc golf course, come to think of it. It's a cool place to check out. crossing over 13th here and we will be, we will be back into the neighborhoods that are over here shortly all right what are some of those vineyards that I got to tell you about in West Philomath Cardwell Hill Cellars Lumos and Harris Bridge vineyards Cardwell Hill and Lumos are more like standard traditional vineyards gorgeous places to go sit and enjoy a tasting flight of wines and Harris Bridge Vineyards is kind of like a aperitif dessert wine place and they also have a beautiful location great venue there uh, but it's definitely different it's it's not where you go to get a cup of Pinot Noir cup a glass of Pinot Noir hashtag classy it's uh, it's where you go to try all kinds of like aperitifs and vermouths and stuff like that and they have some really tasty treats All right, so now we are taking Applegate through a more residential zone here. We are passing by some friend and client's houses right here, right near Philomath Elementary School, which is off to the right. There's some great, you know, just like starter homes, three bedroom ranch homes, some really cool older homes from the early 1900s. It's been really fun helping people buy and sell homes in this area. And today, come to think of it, is the first day of school. So we might be hitting a little bit of school traffic and seeing some school buses. It is September as we film this. This is definitely the end of school day rush right here. This is Philomath High School clearing out 
on a Wednesday afternoon. Plymouth High School, uh, not brand new building, but very new in the grand scheme of things. I'm trying to remember when they did this. Since my wife and I moved to Oregon, they rebuilt this and beautiful new facility, very renowned for its forestry programs, very competitive. And Philomath Public Schools in general have a really good reputation. Way back when, when I used to be a public school teacher, I helped train just one uh, teacher who then became a Philomath Middle School teacher, if I recall correctly. And these schools are very well regarded. So you can see beautiful residential neighborhoods, some great pride and ownership. And off to the right in this area, I think we're going to pass by maybe the entrance. I'm looking for a little sign that I might have missed. Uh, but the Philomath City Park is just south of us, just off to the right, somewhere right over here, which is also a beautiful public park. It's a great venue. Uh, it's a popular spot for people to have their graduation parties and, you know, take their senior pictures and stuff like that, or for the high school kids to hang out after school. We're going to take a quick look through a residential neighborhood off to the site. We're on Vincent, I think it was Vincent Street right now. Just to show you an example, a set of you know, starter homes and mid-range size homes. Just a really pretty you know, residential neighborhood. You got lots of trees in Philomath, very green, a lot of pride and ownership, some beautiful places. I want to take you guys by... I want to try to take you guys by another little spot right over here where we've got some condos because those hit the market periodically. Right over here off of James Street. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go by Kneebeck Hill. We're going to come right back here off to the right, but keep going and go up the hill. We're crossing over the Hunsaker Bikeway. So this is a paved bike path that is totally separate from the road and connects Philomath to Corvallis. And the Philomath Boulevard where we came in, the big main road is off to the right. So we'll take a quick stroll through these, through the parking lots of these condos. These are really neat right at the corner of like Newton and James Place. And most of these, if I recall, are two bedroom, one bath or two bedroom, two bath condos. Cute little kitchens, great way to get started, especially like for my first time home buyers. Just an adorable little condo complex. Little uh, pool off to the left. It's a hot day today. It's 89 degrees out on this fine September Wednesday, but no one is using that pool, at least not today. South of us on Newton and Green, there are some duplexes, which are really fun too. I've had some investor clients buy those duplexes and owner occupy them, like live in half and rent out the other, which is a great way to house hack and get started if you're new at being a real estate investor.
All right, so we are back on James. We're crossing right back over that bikeway that connects Philomath and Corvallis. And now we're gonna go up uh, Nebeck Hill. All right, so in this neighborhood, we are starting to get uphill. And Philomath is bookended, as I've said before, bookended by hillsides. Here on the east side of Philomath, we've got the Nebeck Hill Benton view area, and you got some great valley views. Um, and on the west side, where we'll go later today, you've got the Starlight Summit Hills, where you have some great valley views and views of Mary's Peak uh, from either of these, depending on the exact positioning of the house. I'm going to take us on to one of these little offshoots. This is Avondale Place. And as you can see, we've got a bunch of good-sized two-story homes that, again, depending on how it's positioned on the lot, you've got some outstanding valley views from these homes. Oh yeah, I showed that one straight ahead a bunch of times when it was being sold about seven or eight months ago. And as we, as we crest this little mini summit on our drive, you can see some expansive valley views out there as well. Brentwood Place, these homes have some great views. Just a lovely neighborhood. And we're probably five or six minutes from the southwest corner of Corvallis right now. So you're maybe 10 or 11 minutes to get to downtown Corvallis, if you're a commuter, for example. All right, as we get to the other side of the Nebeck Hill, Benton View area, we're crossing over this intersection with Plymouth and Mount Union Avenue. We've got a little welcome to Philomath sign. Sunbow Organic Farms is on the left. Love seeing them at the Corvallis Farmers Market. Pretty sure they have purple carrots, which are mighty tasty. And now we are on Chapel, or we're about to be on Chapel Drive. There's a little tiny bit of crossover here. For those of you who watched our Corvallis tour of town and the follow-up to that, the expansion pack of rural neighborhoods in Corvallis, we actually did drive by here. So there's a tiny bit of overlap. This is right around where Corvallis and Philomath meet up. Off to the right, you got a great view of the Nebeck Hill Benton View area. We're looking at a couple of clients and friends' homes up there. And so Chapel, we're south of town right now, we're heading west again. And this is a quiet spot, this is a quiet area. We got farm fields and acreage around us. If we go further south, we've got like Fern Road and Airport Road. We have homes on three to five acres. If you're looking for, you know, small acreage, this is a great way to get it. And you're still very close into Philomath and Corvallis, of course, by which I mean the main parts of town. What we're gonna do here is we're going west for just a couple of minutes and we're gonna go buy some new construction that are going up right around the Philomath Middle School. So we're gonna check out Chad E. Davis new construction in Newton Creek, go by the Philomath Middle School in some neighborhoods there, and then we're gonna to go to Mill Pond Crossing, which is to the west of the middle school. There are tours of example homes from both of those builders that I just mentioned already on our YouTube channel in the little new construction playlist. 
All right, that didn't take long. We're turning on Willowbrook Drive, and this is Newton Creek, which is a brand new development, literally still being built, as you can see, by Chad E. Davis Construction. This is a great builder. I've worked with them many times over the years, and I have homes under contract in this neighborhood as we speak. So what you can see from Chad E. Davis Construction and this neighborhood is that they've They've got some, some big homes. They have some really great floor plans, uh, but in this neighborhood, you've got some good sized lots too. A lot of these homes actually have the kind of backyards that a lot of my clients are looking for. And you don't often get that in new construction because they often have very small lots. And one of the things that we love about this neighborhood is that there is no homeowners association. Off to the left, lot 46, got that one under contract right now. I'm not gonna say whose it is for privacy reasons, but an early congratulations to A and T, T family. We were just there yesterday. Back on Chapel Drive. Farm fields off to the left. and slowing down for the school zone. So that's the Philomath Middle School right there, which again has a really nice little nine hole disc golf course. And now we're turning north on 19th Street. 19th Street is a main drag in town. This takes us up ahead to the traffic light where we have like the subway sandwich shop and a gas station or two. And what we're gonna do is go through a quick neighborhood here. Hey look at that a Remax for sale sign. That must be a very hard-working local realtor. So this is just an example of yet another great neighborhood of what I'll call starter homes and mid-range size homes. You know, this is all ranches that are about a thousand square feet to 1500 square feet, mostly three beds, one or two baths, some with really good size yards. And this is built in the 90s. So one of the neat things about Philomath is that it's a slow growth town. So just like Corvallis, Philomath and Corvallis both are slow growth communities. So for new land to get annexed into the urban growth boundary, the public gets to vote on it and the public usually says no. They're very smart about growth, they're very deliberate about growth, which means that you have cohesive neighborhoods, tight zoning, and places, neighborhoods just really feel good, feels established. Just a stone's throw ahead of us to the north is the Clemens is the Clemens Primary School. So it's another thing that people really love about these neighborhoods right here is you're right by the schools. We're gonna to try to do our best to edit this and make it all spiffy and professional for you, but at some point, I'm sure you'll be able to tell that I'm not alone in the car. My sweetheart is here with me. She is helping me with the turn by turn because it's taken a bunch of time and effort to plan all of this out and I don't have it totally memorized. I'm not that good. So big shout out to her, thank you kindly. Big shout out to my team member, Cody Thomas, for editing all of this. And a big shout out to our family friend Chance Olufsen of Cascara Film Company, who is doing all the drone shots you're seeing. All right, we're north on 15th, 
15th is now showing us Mill Pond Crossing. So off to the right, you can see Mill Pond Crossing. This is brand new construction going in. I think they're currently working on phase two or three of this neighborhood. And one of the great things about Mill Ponds that my clients have loved is that it is very affordable. And that's kind of been the point, you know, especially for new construction, these are not super high home prices because new construction tends to be expensive. Building materials lately are not inexpensive. We'll take a quick look through here. The single story ranch home off to the right is the one that was featured in the YouTube channel a few months ago. And you can see this is all still being built. This is all still filling in just like Chatty Davis's Newton Creek. You know, they're still gonna be expanding and building out this way. What you get here are what you'd expect. Open concept, floor plans with you know, like really nice kitchens, quartz or granite countertops, painted or stained cabinets, recessed lighting, true owner's suite bedrooms, lots of storage. Those kind of, you know, check boxes that you would expect with new construction are what you're getting on all these. Very livable floor plans. So we're going right back up here really quick and then we're gonna go over onto Cedar Street because I wanna show you that neighborhood adjacent to this as well. All right, we are on Cedar Street and we're gonna do Cedar Street and Cedar Place little cul-de-sac off of cedar. So we're now at the corner of cedar and cedar. Bam. Got some folks out here. Gosh, I helped them buy this house early in my career. Great home, you know, just safe neighborhood, wonderful place to raise a family in their case. Easy access to the bike path, downtown Philomath, easy commuting into Corvallis if that's where you're working. Just a really nice spot. I wish I had something in the car to drop off of their front door. That's one of my favorite little things is leaving little hellos by like clients and friends' houses. But we won't take up your time doing that on YouTube. As we get closer to 13th right here, you can see that there are some older charming homes that are right on 13th. Not sure if you got a good view of that or not, but you will in a moment. And off to the right as we make this turn, pretty sure we're scooting right by the Philomath Frolic and Rodeo area, which is a big attraction in town that I have never managed to go to. I am so bad at scheduling for that particular event. We lived in Philomath for four and a half years and I'd be saying to my wife, what, what's that noise? It sounds like fireworks. Ah, crud, we missed the rodeo. <laughs> but this is a, a really neat event that people absolutely love. And someday I'm going to get there and maybe even put it on this YouTube channel. All right, that was Chapel Drive behind us. So now we are actually going a little bit further south on 13th. And we're going to take 13th to Grange Hall Road, and we're going to go by one of our favorite local restaurants, which is Gathering Together Farms, a true farm-to-table restaurant and farm stand. So you can see beautiful, beautiful setting. It's just lovely here. you got greenhouses and farm fields and hillsides. And off to the right in just a moment is where Gathering Together Farms farm stand and restaurant is. That restaurant is not open year round, uh, but they are open when it's warm out, like right now. And they open up during the winter time for certain events, like chef's dinners for Valentine's Day. Absolutely love this place. You've got to check them out. Uh, no matter what you get there, it always seems to just be delicious and fresh and local. 
Uh, they've got a great wine selection. They have a, a wood-fired pizza oven. I mean, it's just, you, you can't lose dining there. Hey, what's up, goats? <laughs> Definitely check their website, Gathering Together Farms, that is, not the goats website. Definitely check Gathering Together Farms out. Um, and if you're in the area, even if it's during the winter time, see if they happen to be having some kind of a chef's dinner that you can attend. It's often, when I say chef's dinner, the sort of thing where you just pay however much per person and they just bring out a four course meal or five course meal, whatever it is, and whatever they're bringing out is what you happily eat unless you've got, I guess, dietary restrictions you let them know ahead of time. And it's just always amazing and delicious and fun. We're taking Grange Hall Road west just a wee bit here, and we could go right back up into town, the main part of town, we'd be in the west end, but what we're going to do is we're going to time warp, we're going to speed this footage up a little bit, Mary's River Grange, the actual Grange, speaking of Grange Hall Road, fond memories of Chenard's Nursery Company parties there when my wife used to work for them, great people. Anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to punch south here instead of going right back up into West Philomath. We're going to go south on Alsi Highway. I hope I'm getting that correct. Editor, please feel free to put something on the screen if I'm messing it up. And we're going to go check out a couple example neighborhoods that are a little bit further out. We're going to go by Galatly Way and Pioneer Village. So we're going south on Highway 34 now, if I recall correctly. And now on Galatly Way. So we're going to come back this way on 34 the whole way. But I want to take a couple minutes to take Galatly on a little detour while we go southwest towards Pioneer Village. Galatly Way, uh, I haven't actually been here in a, in a while, but I just had fond memories of checking out some homes here and there were some five acre parcels, just these big swaths of land. I think it's five, maybe two acre parcels. We'll double check. Just big swaths of land going downhill from Galatly Way towards the highway. And it was just really nice, really great setting. And this really speaks to one of the big advantages that a lot of my clients love about Philomath is you can be really close to everything, but get some great space around you. Now you'll notice that we're not talking about prices of homes as we go, because you know a month from now, that'll be outdated. Uh, but to make a grand sweeping generalization, Philomath properties tend to be a little bit more affordable than Corvallis properties, it's just a little bit.
All right. <laughs> nice little detour by Galatly. Show you some of the space with views of the hillside up above Highway 34. And now we're back to Highway 34 and we're gonna keep going southwest towards Pioneer Village. Pioneer Village is a development in rural southwest uh, Philomath, but it's a development of homes that are mostly on two acres. It's not your classic, you know, new homes development. Uh, most of these are from 1970 or 80, if I recall correctly. Off the top of my head, that sounds about right. And it's just a really neat spot. We're probably going to time warp you in a moment and then just show you that neighborhood. This is also, by the way, how you go to get to Mary's Peak. So this might look familiar from the Mary's Peak Drive, if that's posted before this video. Alright, turning in right near the Westwood Community Church onto Greasy Creek Road. And now we're going into the Pioneer Village area. Okay, we're gonna do just kind of like a quick loop through Pioneer Village. I have fond memories of this particular little slope on this gravel road because we had an ice storm maybe four or five years ago and I ended up showing a house up here and kind of slid backwards down this hill on my Prius because Priuses are not really made for rural country driving on ice. So this is the sort of neighborhood where it would serve you well to have four wheel drive because of the winters. And what you can see here is, you know, this is the kind of neighborhood where when you, when you see these homes, because it might just look like trees on the cameras right now, you're, you're not looking at your neighbors. You know, you really do feel like... You really do feel like you're just in a nice private secluded area, even though you have neighbors nearby, which I think is really nice because it makes it, at least for me, makes it feel really safe knowing there's people around, but you're not necessarily staring at each other, which is also great. I think a lot of the homes in this neighborhood, in this community, are either on shared wells or have some kind of community well water set up. It's been a while since I've been here, so I'm going to have to double check that. But you are looking at well and septic. We are definitely not in the city here. Bonafide log cabin off to the right. Love it.
And even though this feels pretty far removed and, you know, pretty nice and quiet and like a forest escape, I think we're 10 minutes from the middle of Philomath right here. So maybe 20 to 25 minutes from downtown Corvallis, if you're commuting into Corvallis. Look at this nice little fern gully. Love it. Alright, there we go, exiting Pioneer Village. For those of you who are paying attention, we time warped through the same roads twice because I got lost, which always seems to happen at some point on a drive with me. So there we go, now mission accomplished. <laughs> We're back on Greasy Creek Road, and we are about to reconnect with Highway 34. If we go left, we'd keep going southwest, and we could go to Mary's Peak, but we'll do that a different day. We're going right back into town. Okay, so where that red SUV just came out, that was Grange Hall Road. So this is where we came out after driving, driving by Gathering Together Farms. So we're just about back to the southwest corner of the main part of Philomath, and front and center you can actually see up that hillside, that is Starlight Summit, one of the neighborhoods that we'll be going to in a few minutes. From here what we're going to do is we're going to go west out of town, we're going to go west on Highway 34 towards the coast for just a few minutes and we're gonna go check out Wren Hill Estates which is a new development of about two acre custom built lots and then from there go through Mary's River Estates and then we'll come back here and go up into some neighborhoods including Starlight Summit. So this is the west corner of town. Stone's throw to the right, we've got the Woodsman Thai food restaurant that we drove by and mentioned before. West on Highway 20 now, towards the coast. I keep getting these confused, sorry if I'm making that confusing for you. That was 34 over there, going towards Mary's Peak. This is 20 going towards the coast. That spot is where they diverge. Okay, so we've got a few minutes of drive time before we get to Wren Hill Estates and then Mary's River Estates and then come back. 
this is like old stomping grounds for me. We used to live in West Philomath, not far from here, and those wineries that I mentioned, Lumos and Cardwell Hill and Harris Bridge Vineyards, those are all right out here, just a few minutes further in the Kings Valley, Wren Hill area. The Benton Bowman Archery Club that I very much enjoy being a target archer in also has a maybe 50 or so acre range right out here kind of behind Cardwell Hill Cellars. And if I recall correctly, the Elks Club gun range is nearby as well. So we're gonna come back out right here, Mary's River Estates Road, but we're gonna go up and then all the way back down. From this spot, if we kept going west, we don't have to make a single turn. We would just end up in Newport, Oregon in about 40 minutes from here. So it's very easy to go to Newport, not even for the day, but just for a cup of clam chowder, or if you wanna just go for a drive. Go to Nye Beach, have a meal, go to the Oregon Coast Aquarium or Rogue Brewery and come back. It's very nearby and it's a beautiful drive. Up ahead and to the right, we've got Wren Hill Estates. If we keep going, we'd go up the hill and down the hill. And then off to the right is Kings Valley Highway where all those vineyards and archery range, etc., are. Oh yeah! And come to think of it, this coming weekend is the Shrewsbury Renaissance Fair and Festival, which is in Kings Valley right up there as well. That's a fun thing to know about. Shrewsbury Renaissance Fair. Okay, so you can see there is still a lot of room to build out here. I mean, this hillside is mostly hillside and not houses. But most of these are two acre parcels and they're custom build lots. Once in a while, you will see a home in this neighborhood hit the resale market, meaning you don't always have to custom build to live here, of course. People do move in and out on occasion. So you got some really lovely homes here, as you can see, with some good space around you. My sweetheart sitting next to me is informing me that we should buy the house on top of the hill up in the distance. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe next week. All right, so now we're going 
kind of out of Wren Hill Estates the back way, where it connects over to the Mary's River Estates neighborhoods. Another fun thing that you all need to know about is the Philomath Open Studios, which take place, I think, in October or November? Coming up in another month or so here. And the Philomath Open Studios, they have a website, and it's artist studios all over Philomath, and some in Corvallis too, that just have, as the name would imply, open houses at their art studios, and you know, usually that's at people's homes. And you just get this map, and it tells you who's doing what kind of art where, and you go around and check out all their wares, and buy them and patronize them, which is super cool to have that kind of a local art community. And I'm bringing that up here because I remember going to a Philomath Open Studio somewhere right over here on Mary's River Estates. Also have some clients that are actually up ahead on Mary's River Estates Road in one of the homes that is super cool with like a detached garage and a apartment above the garage. And there's a bunch of those. There's some really neat outbuildings um, and little accessory dwelling units in this area because you've got some space around you. And here we are coming to the bottom of Mary's River Estates Road, if that's the correct name of the road. Right back by that hay cover, and this is now Highway 20 again. So now we're going to go left on Highway 20 and go back into Plomouth and explore some more neighborhoods right in town. Back to that west corner of town. So we've got the sawmill off to the right. We have another one of the Welcome to Philomath signs straight ahead and on the left, which is, if you'll notice, a cross section of a tree. And what we're going to do now is we're going to go north on 7th. 7th is pretty much like the last street in the main part of West Philomath. We're going to go north on 7th and then up into some neighborhoods there. Applegate, back to Main Street in Philomath, Philomath Boulevard. Thai food restaurant is on the left, We're at that west corner of town. I love that Thai food restaurant in case you can't tell. Unsponsored video. 
and now going north on 7th. In this neck of the woods, you've got some multifamily, you've got some duplexes, um, you've got a lot of freestanding single family homes, some old ones, some newer ones from the 1990s. There's a big mix of the type of homes in this area right here. We're gonna go left on Pioneer. And this in fact is our old stomping grounds because we're going to take a quick look at Tasman Place, which is where we lived for almost five years in West Falmouth. And then we're gonna go up the hill into Starlight Summit, which is straight ahead. So quick look off to the right, Tasman Place. Great little cul-de-sac, wonderful example of some mid-size or even slightly larger homes here in Philomath. Mostly a quarter acre lots right here, so you've got some good backyards. And my joke when I was in this neighborhood was that I called this Moonlight Lowlands. You know, people would say, where do you live? And I'd say, well, you know Starlight Summit? Yeah, I live down the hill from there in Moonlight Lowlands. And they'd be like, okay, even though no one calls it that, I really tried to make it a thing. It, it never picked up any traction though. Now we're gonna go up into Starlight Summit. Starlight Summit is the neighborhood that I mentioned earlier in terms of like bookending Philomath on the west end. We saw Nebeck Hill, Benton View on the east end, and this is Starlight Summit on the west end, or Starlight Village. Used to love just walking up and down this hill. There are some logging roads that just go out into the woods from here that are great to just go for a walk or a hike on. You can go sit by the river, just get into some nature. And of course, what people love about this neighborhood is that you've got very new homes. They're still being built, which you can tell, and valley views. I mean, some of these have views of Mary's Peak, and even if you don't have a view of Mary's Peak, you have expansive valley views. In my short video where I show you what it's like to commute between Philomath and Corvallis, it included this right here. So you can still build off to the right, get a nice view. And straight ahead of us, on the other side of this intersection, you might be able to tell that there's just a gate there, but that's going to connect through. That's actually a spot that's gonna punch through and connect with Clail, Quail Glen, excuse me. So Quail Glen is another spot in Philomath where you've got a little bit of new construction going on and it is gonna connect right there into Starlight Summit. Mary's Peak in the center of the frame now. Little walking paths off to the right that just go kind of in between different parts of the neighborhood. Lovely area, Melville, Crescent, and Sunshine. Used to love walking around these neighborhoods. There are a couple of cute small parks in this area. One of them is off to the right. There's a little like basketball court and just some seating areas. Little playground structure. A lot of the homes that we're looking at are 
1990s construction, some even newer right around here. And the reason that I'm taking you on this particular spot is because we not only have freestanding single family homes, as you can see, uh, but we're also going to go by a little area where you've got some townhomes. And I've had a couple of friends and clients live in those townhomes, still do at the moment. And these are really well built. That is about half of those are the same builder. I think it's Keystone Builders, same builder that's building similar style up in Adair Village. We're checking out Dampier Drive now. We've got some clients that are over here in a lovely home with a nice backyard and, you know, again, just surrounded by single family homes. Just nice, pleasant, quiet, safe neighborhood. Oh, that's the other little park playground over there. All right, back to Pioneer, but now going east on Pioneer. Okay, so now we're on Pioneer and we are about to hit 9th Street. And later on in this video, when we wrap up, when we finish, we're gonna come right down 9th Street and that's where we'll end the video, is getting back into town via West Hills Road and 9th Street to show you another way in and out of Philomath. There we go, passing the back of the Philomath Museum back there, beautiful building. As we cross over 12th, we've got a cute little park right here. Just a nice little public green space, even though it's a small one. And we are gonna turn right on 13th Street. And hey, check it out. We've got Spaith Lumber and the Spaith Heritage House, the Philomath location of Spaith Lumber right there. Spaith's a great local hardware and lumber store and the Philomath location here has just really cool salvage materials. You can buy awesome wood slabs, all kinds of stuff there. Old doors and windows, it is a very neat place to check out. And there's nut cakes and, oh gosh, what's the local bakery called right there? It's like Sunnyside Bakery, they have awesome, awesome stuff. All right, so we're on college heading east and we're just like a block north of Philomath Boulevard, just a block north of the main drag right now. And I just wanted to show you another example residential spot here. Um, there are some really cool older homes like this blue and white one up on the right. We've got another, uh, some kind of mill up on the left there. I've got this house under contract for some clients. I'm super excited for you guys off to the left. It's like a 1936 house with some cute gardening in the backyard, really charming place, can't wait to get to give you keys. And you have some multifamily here too, you've got some duplexes and fourplexes. But you know, just another great example residential neighborhood. All right.
right. We're gonna go left on 19th, we're gonna go north on 19th right here. And we mentioned the Boulevard Apartments before on the east side of Philomath. This is Oak Springs Apartments. These are also very new apartments that are a great place just to land if you wanna get here and rent a place while you go house hunting. All right, so we're going north on 19th. Alirica Internet. Alirica is a local internet company. I believe they specialize or at least emphasize satellite internet. So they especially serve a lot of rural areas that don't have like Comcast, Xfinity, CenturyTel, stuff like that. So as we finish up our tour of some example neighborhoods in Philomath, what we're gonna do is we're going north on 19th right now. And uh, way behind us now is the main part of town, downtown Philomath. And then behind there, south of there, is the Philomath Middle School and Clemens Primary School area that we were at a while back ago. We got school bus parking. I don't see any of the school buses right now. Oh wait, that's this one up on the left. Scott Co, local trucking company. We have a friend who works for them. And then on the left right here, we've got Forest Meadows, which is a beautiful manufactured home park. And if we kept going straight, this would take us into Southwest Corvallis, right near Grand Oaks, right near the fairgrounds. But this is the Philomath tour, so we're gonna go onto West Hills Road. See one more, just kind of quiet, rural neighborhood just north of the main part of Philomath, and then wrap up getting back into the part, main part of town. Okay, so this is kind of like the back way in and out of West Philomath. This used to be my commute if I wanted to avoid Philomath Boulevard and some of those traffic lights. All right, so Wooded Knolls Drive. That no outlet sign is making me question my pre-planning, but we'll see if I did it right. So out here we've got like Wooded Knolls Drive, Worth Way, and McBee Road. Just some awesome places to get a lovely home on some small acreage very quiet setting right near everything else the town has to offer. And as you can see, this just really shows off a lovely September day. One of the things that we absolutely love about living here in the Mid Valley, the Philomath, Corvallis, Albany area, is that you've got tons of evergreens, so it's green year-round, it's lush year-round, but you still have deciduous trees, you still get some change in seasons, which we're even starting to see a tiny bit of right now. take Worthway to McBee Road as we continue through this general area. Okay, we did a little turnaround there because Siri has a great sense of humor and knows that I have no sense of direction and is trying to take me down a very prominently posted no trespassing road. So. 
let's go back down Worth Way and wrap up by showing you how West Hills Road connects from here right back into the west side of Philomath. All right, as we go on the way back towards West Hills, I'm pretty sure that Pheasant Court Winery is off to the left, right off of Worth Road here. I must say, I've never actually been to their location. I just noticed a sign while we were driving, but they definitely sell some great wines that we've found at local places like the First Alternative Foods Co-op and Market of Choice. Okay, back on West Hills Road. So folks, I hope that this tour of some example Philomath neighborhoods has been helpful for you. We're gonna keep going for another couple of minutes here so that you can see how this all connects back. And I'm going to give you a bonus neighborhood. We probably edited it out, but I was trying to go up and make a B and got kind of turned around there. But since there's still a little bit of battery left in the GoPros, let's go up here and show you yet another just absolutely charming neighborhood. A little escape in the forested hills here. We just sold a house for our client Sandra up here on this hill. This is a great opportunity, great way to get, again, a little bit of space around you. Yeah, grapes off to the right. A little micro vineyard. But a great opportunity to get some space around you and still have, you know, two or three minutes away easy access to the main drag in Philomath. So what I'll do is I'll just nose into the driveway here now that someone else lives here, but we'll pull up some of our aerial drone footage from Marks in Time Photography, and with permission, we'll show that off so that you can see this hillside that we're on. Wasn't that some nice drone footage? Yes, indeed. Marks and Time Photography, another wonderful local photographer and videographer. I use them a ton when we market homes for sale, when we're listing properties for people. Because that is what they specialize in. And then I use my friend Chance Olufsen, Cascara Films, for getting supplemental drone work like this or doing like commercials or that about me video on uh, the front page of YouTube that we have pinned there. That was Chance. It's an area full of entrepreneurs, very driven and artistic people. It's really cool. Okay, so little bonus, <laughs> little bonus trip there. We're right back to West Hills Road. If we were gonna turn left, a few minutes later, we get into Southwest Corvallis, Grand Oaks Drive, at uh, Grand Oaks neighborhood over there. But we're turning right, which is now gonna take us kind of south 
back towards the west side of Philomath. This is Heritage Hills. Uh, there's gorgeous like park back there. We went to our friend's graduation there when she got her degree. And Heritage, Heritage Hills, you'll also see on menus a lot because it's like Heritage Hills beef or Heritage Hills pork. Take a trip down memory lane. And again, this used to be my commute. Just taking West Hills up and over into Southwest Corvallis, and then I'd go to downtown from there. So I mentioned earlier when we were on Starlight Summit, the uh, fairly new construction at the top of the hill up here, that Quail Glen is gonna punch through. This is Quail Glen, new construction going on off to the right. And on the left, on Quail Glen, there's some multifamily. So there's duplexes that you can buy and live in and rent out, and some acreage for sale off to the left here too. Uh, but also on the Quail Glen area, there are some townhomes, zero lot line townhomes there too, which are great places to live, especially as like starter homes or downsizing homes. All right, we're over the little hill, hill there, and this is Pioneer Street that we're about to cross over. So we've gone through this intersection already, uh, Tasman Place and Pioneer, uh, Pioneer, Tasman Place and Starlight Summit are off to the right. And as we get to the bottom of this hill, we're getting right back to Philomath Boulevard, the main drag in town, the main drag in Philomath, Main Street. So I think what my wonderful bride and I are gonna do right now is we're gonna go to the Woodsman and we'll end the video by pulling into the Woodsman parking lot so you can finally see this glorious Thai food restaurant that we are absolutely in love with and I keep giving shout outs to. So folks, I really appreciate you checking this out. Uh, we are working on an Albany driving tour as well. Please stay tuned and subscribe so you don't miss that if you've been waiting for it. And again, if you can, uh, and again, if I can be a local resource for you, that's the point here. Um, I'm not a full-time YouTuber. I am a real estate agent based out of the Mid Valley. I help people buy and sell homes here, and it'll be my pleasure to connect with you before you even get here, help you settle into a rental if that's what you need, uh, just as a casual resource in that regard, and you know, be a local friend for you in town so that we're ready to go when you do want to buy a house and move here full-time. Let's go to the Woodsman. Thanks again for tuning in.